when I listen to some of the comments which are made on the alternative media and watch some of the videos that have been posted, I ask myself a very simple question. Are we capable of being honest with ourselves? Why do we concoct lies? Why do we distort reality? Why do we engage in fear-mongering just because we want to mobilize support? This, I think, is the height of dishonesty. I take a totally different approach. I look at the situation as it should be seen. There are strengths, there are weaknesses. We should not sweep our weaknesses under the carpet, but we should also acknowledge our strengths at the same time. For instance, when people try to give the impression that our economy is about to collapse, we're about to go bankrupt, we are heading towards disaster, this is a lot of hogwash. The Malaysian economy is strong and stable. Our fundamentals are very secure. The fact that um, there is almost full employment in the country, inflation is under control, the fact that um, we have reduced poverty from 64% in 1957 to 1.7% today. The fact that uh, if you look at our socioeconomic structure, look, at the time of uh, independence, um, we were largely rural. Today, we are 70% urban. And if one looks at um, other aspects of our profile as a nation, we were agricultural. Today, we are a manufacturing nation. If you look at the class structure, our middle class is big and strong and stable. And it's multi-ethnic, which is very, very important. It's because there is such a middle class that we have been able to stabilize ethnic relations in the country. It is because there is such a middle class that we have been able to develop a functioning democracy. Otherwise, there would have been no democracy in the country. Now, we forget these things. This doesn't mean that we are perfect. Of course, in all these areas, we need to improve. We need to strengthen, for instance, um, space for articulation of alternative views in our society. I also believe that we must address this challenge of a gap between the have a lot and the have a little. We should also fight corruption with greater vigor but at the same time, I would say, look, uh, we have set up 14 special courts, so many prosecutions in the last few years, and for the first time, we are going after the givers and not just the takers of bribes. There are integrity pledges, which are working, especially for some of the huge projects. And at the same time, you find that um, if at one time only about 20% uh, of uh, big tenders were open tenders, today you find that 80% of them are open tenders. So there is improvement, there is progress. But it doesn't mean that we can rest on our laurels. There's much more to be done as far as fighting corruption is concerned. And the same thing with ethnic relations. One Malaysia is a beautiful concept. And One Malaysia is premised upon the Constitution, upon the Rukun Negara, upon Wawasan 2020. It is wrong to say, for instance, that one Malaysia has replaced Wawasan 2020. It is not. One Malaysia is an attempt to build solidarity amongst our people, a sense of cohesiveness, but the direction is towards 2020. And uh, the Rukun Negara serves as a preamble. The constitution serves as the constitutional framework. So all these things are related. And this is how we should explain things to the people instead of just lying to the people, just to uh, build up anger and... Um, antagonism towards the ruling establishment. I think this is something which is very, very mischievous. It is dangerous because we are not contributing towards uh, the larger good by doing things of this sort. Tell the truth. Look at the actual situation. Don't pick up individual events here and there and forget the larger picture. The larger picture is what counts. And Malaysia, and I say this without batting an eyelid, is one of the most successful countries in the global south. It is one of the most competitive in economic terms. 
It is one of the most significant trading nations in the world. We have been consistently within the first 20 at the global level as far as uh, our trade is concerned. And if you look at uh, various other aspects of our nation, mind you, this is one of the most complex multi-ethnic societies in the world. And we have maintained a very high degree of inter-ethnic peace. It's not something that you can dismiss lightly. That inter-ethnic peace is something which so many other nations would crave for. Compare Malaysia to a number of other multi-ethnic societies in the world, to Sri Lanka, to India, to Indonesia. You compare Malaysia to countries like Lebanon, to Ireland, to the old Yugoslavia. We have done quite well in maintaining inter-ethnic peace. And at the same time, you find that uh, there is a clear sense of direction as far as our society is concerned. And uh, over and above everything else, don't forget that the person who is seeking a mandate from the Malaysian people this time, he's doing it for the first time. It's the first time that Dato Sri Najib is asking for a mandate. And he's asking for a mandate with a track record behind him. He has done a number of things in the last four years. He has done a number of things in relation to the economy, public transportation, public housing. He has done a number of things in relation to um, Tuskars. He has organized a number of uh, important activities as far as Malaysian society is concerned. He has also got rid of certain laws that we were all against as uh, social activists. He has got rid of the Internal Security Act. He has got rid of um, the Sedition Act. He is replacing it with the National Harmony Act. He has got rid of all the emergency ordinances which uh, no one is prepared to touch in the past. He has amended the University and University Colleges Act to allow young people, students, to participate in the political process. He has also amended the Publications Act. He has uh, introduced an act that gives meaning to our right to assemble, the Peaceful Assembly Act. Now, when a person has done all these things and is trying to do even more, wouldn't a sensible, reasonable person give him a chance? At least give him a chance. Give him another five years to see what he can do instead of believing in a lot of hogwash, in a lot of uh, balderdash about, oh, the country is heading towards bankruptcy, it's going to collapse and all the rest, but without the facts, without arguments. And the people who are doing this are so-called educated people. It is, uh, in a sense, a shame that a segment of uh, the Malaysian educated middle class indulges in this sort of um, utterly superficial politics just because they're trying to whip up sentiments and enable political parties that cannot even work together, who are so different ideologically, who share nothing in common. They don't even have a structure of authority. They don't even have a common symbol. And you want to put these parties in power at a time like this. Why? Because you say, oh, you know, it's time for change. But don't forget that for the last 55 years, we have changed a great deal. It is not as if you have a ruling coalition that has not changed at all. It has changed. In the process of changing from uh, agriculture to industry, from uh, rural to urban, in terms of uh, changes to our class structure, all these changes that have taken place in our society, we have made mistakes, no doubt about it. There have been shortcomings, but at the same time, we have also improved ourselves. So let us acknowledge the truth. This is all that we're asking for. Understand the real situation. Do not be taken in by lies, distortions, and um, mischievous attempts to, well, basically destroy the nation.